Namaste. In today's video, I'll talk about the difference between how two types of energies affect us. One is the top-down awakening, that is the descent of grace, the energy moving from top down into the body. This can be called as Shakti path from the universe. I generally call it the top-down awakening. So here there is a descent of energy coming from the top of the head down into the body. The difference between this type of energy and the energy that originates at the bottom of the body and moves up the spine, which is the Kundalini awakening. I'll talk about the major differences between these two type of energies and how they affect us. The energy from the universe, it can come on to you if your pineal gland is activated. When you are into certain spiritual practices and the practice affects your pineal gland, this can attract the pranic energy that is there in the universe. And that energy gets attracted to this person. It starts descending on top of the person. It moves top down into the body. The origin of how this energy enters into your body is at the top. And it predominantly works in the upper area of the head. That is the area which is above the pineal gland. Whereas uh, Kundalini awakening, it starts at the base of your spine. It does not start at the top of your head. And this energy, when it gets released at the Muladhara Chakra, that is the Kundalini energy, it starts moving up the spine. So the major difference is the origin point. That is how you can make out whether you are having a down up Kundalini awakening or a top down descent of grace. The second difference, the top down awakening, a person can have this experience when they are evolved to a certain extent, sometimes when they have certain types of substances like marijuana or maybe some kind of ganja or some other LSD, that has an effect on the pineal gland. Once the pineal gland opens or it starts vibrating, the scope of attracting this energy is very high. For some, this comes from past lifetime. If you have attracted this energy in your past lifetime, you will attract this energy in your current lifetime. And sometimes when you have very spiritually evolved parents, then you will have that as part of your inheritance. When this energy is about to descend onto your body, there are certain symptoms which are associated with it, which can get confused with the Kundalini awakening symptoms. There is a divine timing that is attached to this event, where the energy descends upon the person. And this descending energy, the effect of this energy mostly is at the pineal gland level, at the heart level and at the gut level. So this energy moves down into the body and when the energy is moving down into the body, it can open a lot of brain centers in the head. The person will have a lot of psychic experiences. They can experience a lot of paranormal activity or uh, timelessness or they will experience time differently when this is working in the pineal gland area. This energy after it descends onto the person's body, it moves through the body, it makes a lot of changes in the body. After a point, it turns upwards. After this energy turns upwards, it gets stuck at a knot in the stomach area. So it has to pierce through this knot because our ego or the lower being he resides in the Manipura Chakra. The being that is caught up in many lifetimes, that being resides in the Manipura Chakra. So our egoic structures which are keeping us in the loop of life and death, that cycle that goes on, we are caught up in that loop because of the very strong personality structures or the ideas we hold, the belief systems we hold. It forms a knot in the stomach area. So this is trying to pierce through that knot and move upwards. 
it generally feels electrical so once it pierces through the snots it moves up and out of the body it becomes a auric field so what is rising up here is not the kundalini but this is the vyana vayu or the auric field as long as this field is working through the body this field will protect the person it will not allow you to take on more ideas so any idea you take on any new belief you are trying to plant within yourself this energy immediately moves up and cleanses your system so your tendency now is to now live in the present moment this is what the top down awakening when this energy is moving upwards people can see chakras inside their head to some extent the left side and the right side of the body unite the left side of every person's body is their feminine side and the right side of every person's body is their masculine side these two halves they come together to some extent that is the wiring between these two halves happens like a zigzag pattern on the back the zigzag pattern on the back is forming new nervous connections which are connecting the left side and the right side of the body to some extent apart from that when this energy is moving into the head it does some rewiring within the brain so people generally experience lot of headaches during this phase lot of symptoms with regard to the head region are experienced because this energy can work actively for a long time within the head it is restructuring the brain uh, wiring uh, it is generating new neurons new connections it is changing the person at a very deeper level so the impact of that is felt generally at the stomach level the heart level and the head level so in a top down awakening when the energy is moving upwards in the body what is actually moving up is not the kundalini it is the vyana vayu it is a type of pranic energy in our body and that vyana vayu constitutes a auric field so it is that which you feel like an electrical energy moving through your entire torso going out of your head and around your head and it is constantly moving around your body provided there is more descent of grace so how many times you attract this descent of grace onto yourself based on that this energy will keep on moving through your body it will be recycling through your body and when it is recycling through your body it is not allowing you to get attached to the egoic structures the kundalini awakening that is the down up kundalini awakening this happens when the kundalini which is sleeping at the base of the spine wakes up this kundalini it will move through the spine that is the central column of the spine it moves through it while it is moving up the spine it can take many years it opens chakras it energizes the chakras then the kundalini energetic flow moves into those energetic channels that are corresponding to the chakra it clears all the karmic baggage at every level before it reaches sahasrara here but this energy too needs the prana that is kundalini at one point in time needs the top down awakening to progress when does this happen when kundalini first wakes up from sleep and it wants to ascend the spine it needs the prana that is the top down awakening to happen the pranic energy that comes from the universe or the descent of the grace it is required because it is fuel for the kundalini process so what kundalini does is it first ascends up into the head that is the agya chakra area from outside the spine and it pierces through the lower part of the agya chakra and it descends down from front 
Once this event unfolds in the person's body, that person experiences top-down awakening and he can experience prana moving down into the body, dripping like water droplets in the initial stages. Once this pranic energy goes into the Muladhara Chakra, that is when Kundalini can ascend up the spinal cord. So for the pranic energy or the descent of grace to reach Kundalini which is sleeping at the Muladhara, Kundalini has to rise up the back of the person's body that is outside the spine area. It has to pierce this area until Kundalini does not rise up to Agya Chakra. From back it pierces this area and it goes down. Until Kundalini does this, the pranic energy cannot reach Kundalini. So a normal top down awakening will not reach the Kundalini. It will move through the body but this is not reaching the Kundalini or it is not waking up Kundalini which is sleeping at the Muladhara in general. But even before the Kundalini can rise, an event unfolds in the person's body. That is, as I said earlier, the left side is the feminine side of a person and the right side is the masculine side of the person. So here the chakras get activated. You will feel chakra points spinning in your body. And then at certain level, you will feel that all your chakras are working. And then you will feel the Ida and Pingala nadis. They are crisscrossing over the spine. They go up like this on your body, crisscrossing. You will feel this event. It is only after this event unfolds that Kundalini will awaken and move up the spine. When the Ida and Pingala nadis are crisscrossing your spine like this, here they are uniting the left side and the right side of your body. That is the feminine and the masculine aspects within you are coming together 100%. In a top down awakening it happens to a certain level. But in a down up Kundalini awakening there is a total 100% integration of the left side and the right side of the body. So the Ida Pingala they crisscross and they come and they meet at this point here. When they meet here, it is called marriage. That is, the left side of your body has married the right side of your body. Or your inner masculine has married your inner feminine. And when Kundalini moves into the brain centers, up into the head, it changes the brain structure. It opens all those inactive dormant areas in the brain. And now the brain is working 100%. In a top-down awakening, the awakening has an effect on the upper part of the brain, but it does not activate the 100% area of the brain, like how a Kundalini awakening does. So this is the second major difference between a top-down awakening and a Kundalini awakening. The third difference, the descent of grace, the pranic energy that is coming to you is coming from the universe. As I said earlier, it can get activated for various reasons. But the Kundalini energy which is lying at the base of your spine is your own energy. It is your potential. Normally a person cannot use more than 2-3% to of their brain capacity. They are unable to tap into the remaining 97% of their brain capacity. So what is happening with the remaining capacity? That is sleeping at the Muladhara Chakra. So the Kundalini energy is your untapped potential, which is dormant, which is static, which is not active. So when you are able to wake up this dormant energy, and when this energy moves through your spine, activating chakras, it reaches the top part of your head. The certain stages you go through in the process, you are able to use 100% of your potential. So Kundalini is your personal energy. That is you in a latent form. And you are not aware that most of your energy is dormant, lying, sleeping at the base of your spine. 
Once that wakes up, a person who is living from the Muladhara Chakra or from the lower three chakras, that is basically he has a human form but that person has a lot of animalistic tendencies. For example, animals experience a lot of emotions like aggression, jealousy, they experience this uh, heat in their body, they are territorial, they fight over food or meat. So these are typically animalistic behaviors and humans also exhibit these behaviors. That is because they are working from the lower three chakras when the kundalini is sleeping at the base of the spine. For an animal, the muladhara chakra is the highest chakra. That is, it's like the sahasara chakra. When that opens, in the next lifetime, they are born as humans. Though they have the human form, they still carry a lot of animalistic tendencies, animalistic instincts are still there. As long as these behaviors are there in their subconscious mind, they will have hold over the person and the person will typically exhibit a lot of uh, lower mind thinking and behavior, which is very close to animalistic behavior. When a person is exhibiting this type of behavior, he is doing this because he is not able to tap into 100% of his potentiality. That is the Kundalini sleeping at the base of the spine. So typically this person is trying to live life, trying to avoid pain, seeking gain. So a lot of the self-centeredness, selfishness, a kind of callousness and other negative traits that the person um, exhibits it's because they are not able to live from the higher centers in their body to some extent the top down awakening will help the person to shift into the higher centers that is because the energy is descending from top down the brain and the heart open up to some extent there's a lot of activity happening in the body so the person can shift to some extent or at least in some situations or many situations, they will be uh, thinking from their heart or from their higher wisdom. But when the Kundalini awakening happens, Kundalini unfolds, it moves through all the chakras and it creates a bridge between the lowest Muladhara chakra to the highest Sahasra chakra. When this happens, the person moves away from the lower animalistic tendencies totally. He moves away from these tendencies towards his divine nature. He is able to express the divinity through him 100%. In all types of animalistic drives or lower instincts or that lower mind tendencies, impressions, everything is totally removed from the system in a down of Kundini awakening. The fourth difference between a top-down awakening and a kundalini awakening is that in a top-down awakening, when the energy is moving from the base to the head, that is after the energy has descended into the body, the energy changes the body and then it again turns upwards. When it is moving upwards through the body, this is felt very dramatically. You can feel something like a jet of electrical energy pushing its way through the center of the body. It feels throughout the body in the back in the torso area and it is moving through the body. But in a Kundalini awakening, when Kundalini is moving up the spine, here I am referring to the awakening that is starting at the base of the spine. So when the awakening is starting at the base of the spine and moving upwards, it is very subtle. Many do not even feel it. For me, I could really first time experience the Kundalini moving in my spine when it reached my Vishuddhi Chakra, that is the throat area. Until then, I was able to see colors, I was able to see deities, I was able to feel Ida Pingala moving, but I could not experience Kundalini moving through my body. It is that subtle. The next difference in a top-down awakening 
and a Kundalini awakening. How do you know that a person has totally transcended their lower ego or their lower animalistic tendencies? How do we know it? You can know it depending on where Kundalini is residing in the person's body. If Kundalini is sleeping in the Muladhara Chakra, it simply means that this person still carries these lower qualities within him at some level. Even if he is carrying maybe 10% or 5% of those tendencies, though he has worked through a lot of the baggage, if still a part of the baggage is there within that person, Kundalini will still be at the Muladhara Chakra level. Once that person has transcended the lower emotions, especially hatred, jealousy, these heavy emotions, once they are transcended to totally, then Kundalini, it changes its residence. I'm talking about Kundalini Shakti. It changes its residence from Muladhara to the Vishuddhi Chakra. It comes and sits here. And it operates the body sitting at this level. In a top down awakening, the energy that is descending onto the person, it changes the person a lot. And basically this person being an evolved person displays a lot of very good higher chakra qualities. They have a lot of gratitude, love, wisdom. They want to change, they want to grow, they want to overcome their inner fears. So all these positive traits are there in this person. But still the Kundalini is sleeping at the Muladhara Chakra. That is they have to still work through a lot of karmic baggage that is there at the subconscious or unconscious level. Once they have worked through that and even this energy, the descent of grace which has descended onto that person's body will help them to clear away their karmic baggage faster so that the Kundalini awakening can happen in that person's body. That is when descent of grace happens many times onto a person's body, the descent of grace when it starts working through that person's system, cleansing that person's system, in 1 to 10 lifetimes, this energy can activate the sleeping kundalini at the base of the spine. It is like this energy has come into the body and it wakes up the kundalini. Or it prepares the physical container, the mental body, everything for uh, the kundalini to wake up. But in a top down awakening in general, until this event happens, what I spoke about just now, the kundalini is still residing at the base of the spine. Until this event happens, that is the pranic energy descending into the body, uh, it activates the sleeping kundalini at the, at the base of the spine. Until this event unfolds, no matter how much descent of grace this person is experiencing, no matter how much that person is working through his body, kundalini is still sleeping at the muladhara chakra. So it simply means that at some level, they have to still work through uh, more of that karmic baggage, which is there at a very subconscious or unconscious level. They may think that we have transformed a lot. Uh, we have cleared away a lot of our uh, baggage. But until the baggage is cleansed 100%, even at the unconscious level, you should not have these animalistic tendencies or certain uh, impressions these things suddenly come out in the person when they put under stress if somebody has had a top-down awakening and this energy has worked through their body over many years it cleans away a lot of them karmic baggage but when certain situations which are very stressful or which are threatening if they have to face them suddenly the tendencies that are there the karmic baggage that is still there at the subconscious level surfaces and that comes out and this person will be surprised when he looks back at this incident that how could I behave like that? I thought I've cleared away all my baggage. So though at a conscious level the person is trying to work through, they are dedicated, they are focused on doing it, 
until they clear it away 100%, Kundalini will not move from the base of the spine. After Kundalini awakens, it moves up, it comes and sits in this area. Now this person has changed so much that he cannot hate another person. It is very difficult, nearly impossible for this person to display hatred towards another being. There are chances that Kundli can again go back down if this person does something very bad. But that happens very rarely. Generally, when Kundalini sits at this level, it is operating at this level and the person's way of thinking, behavior, everything comes from this level. Now it is not at the Muladhara Chakra. Again, when that person evolves even further, that feeling, strong feeling of I as the knower, I as intelligence, it still holds the person. When the person transcends that arrogance also, that I-ness also, then Kundalini moves from this area, she comes and sits in this area. So now she sits in this area and she is controlling the body from this area. So what is typically happening in a Kundalini awakening is your Kundalini is shifting its residence from the Muladhara Chakra. The next residence is this area, then this area. But in a top-down awakening, until it leads to a Kundalini awakening, Kundalini is still sleeping at the Muladhara Chakra. That is, the certain tendencies have to be still worked out at Maybe the person at the surface level is not aware, but they have to still work through certain uh, of their own limitations. And when they work through it, that is when it will transform into a Kundalini awakening. So Kundalini awakening is a total transformation of the individual. If that individual does not do anything drastically bad, Kundalini will only continue upwards. When he is living correctly, it will only move upwards. It will change that person totally. The transformation is 100%. Next, many of the Kriyas that one experiences in a Kundalini awakening can happen over many, many years. It can even happen over one to two lifetimes. And it depends on what type of Nadi the Kundalini takes when it is rising up the person's body. I made a video on the different types of Kundalini risings. I'll post a link to that in the description box below. Please look at that video. In a top-down awakening, they experience Kriyas too, but that is for a limited period of time. Generally, when the energy is very strong in this area, in the head area, and it is moving through the body, there is a phase where they will experience Kriyas. But the Kriyas are not as intense and as prolonged as they are in a Kundalini awakening process. Nextly, these people who are undergoing a top-down awakening, they experience bliss states or Samadhi states at the beginning of the process itself. That is, they very quickly experience these uh, temporary uh, bliss states or temporary uh, samadhi-like states or void states, they can easily attain those states. But in a kundalini awakening, which is starting at the base of the spine, these experiences of bliss or samadhi states happen at the later part of the uh, process. That is, kundalini has to move up. And it only when it comes to this region and moves up, that is when that person will enjoy those bliss states or the samadhi states. But these states are very deep and they are very prolonged. One more difference is when somebody has these samadhi states through a kundalini awakening, they can continuously go back into those states and they can live in those states for a very long period. You will have many yogis, many saints who at their own will, they can move into these bliss states 
they are in those states of samadhi and they come out on a regular basis. So these are the ones who have had a down of Kundalini awakening. But the top down Kundalini awakening, the person cannot do that. That means they cannot go into states of samadhi as per their will. These events happen to them for a temporary period, brief period, and they happen surprisingly. That is, they are not aware that they will go into that state. When they are in deep meditation, suddenly they may experience that state, a state of void or samadhi. It can be part of their experience. But this is not a voluntary uh, movement into that void space or the samadhi experience. In a top-down awakening, when the descent of grace is experienced and when this energy is working through the body, the person becomes aware of how his karmic imprints are affecting his behavior in the external world. He becomes more self-aware. He understands that there is a lot within him that needs to be worked through and he puts an effort to cleanse his psychic material. This is done in stages by that person and they can even take certain external help. There are many uh, alternative therapies that will help you to um, speeden up this process of cleansing your inner body like energetic work that is done on the meridian points, meditation, it could be yoga or it could be some sort of an, uh, pranic exercise or activity, breathing activities. They do a lot of these things that helps them to cleanse away the karmic baggage and in their visions or in their dreams they will see a lot of that black material leaving their body and going away. So this happens over a lengthy period of time. They might take external help also here. This is how typically happens in a top down awakening. In a Kundalini awakening, the person works through certain aspects of himself which he needs to improve, some changes which he has to make so that he can dissolve the fixed personality structures in his body. For example, there could be some life lessons that person needs to learn or maybe he needs to express more authentically. There are certain types of lessons this person needs to learn. Once those lessons are learned by this person totally, this person need not work through his karmic baggage anymore. Kundalini cleanses away the entire baggage that is there in his body. And how does this happen? An event happens in this person's body where this person will experience a blast at the base of the spine. It is like there is a small tiny bomb sitting at the base of the spine and this bursts and that fire moves through the central spine that is the Brahmanadi. Brahmanadi is where our karmic baggage of many lifetimes is stored. So this bursting fire, it moves through the spine in a split second. It pushes away all that black or dark material that is there inside this uh, space. The person can see it coming out of their body through the chakra points, the mouth, the eyes, the head, sideways. So the body is just oozing a lot of black matter. In a matter of one to two days, the entire karmic baggage is wiped out from the person's body. So here, once the person learns his lessons or he has learned to live authentically and he has changed his lifestyle to facilitate the kundalini energy to work better in his body, this event unfolds. So he need not work through all that material separately over many years. So that is the advantage somebody who has a down-up Kundalini awakening has. But whereas a top-down person has to work through it. Each time the energy descends, it works through the body. The person becomes more aware. So this happens over stages. 
See, next difference between a top-down awakening and a Kundalini awakening. A top-down awakening, after it changes the person to a certain level, the person may develop ideas like everything is love or everything is divine, I'm connected to everything. A lot of those ideas which are connecting this person to the universal fabric where he feels more like a universal being, he understands how his actions affects others around him. He is more aware as a person and he is operating from the higher chakras. But in a Kundalini awakening, it is all about moving away from identities. So in a Kundalini awakening, you are losing away your older ideas, but nothing is coming to replace it. Somebody who has a Kundalini awakening will not say that everything is love because that is just another idea. In a Kundalini awakening, we are totally emptying the container. There is no sense of I here. You are moving away from the sense of I. You are moving more into a witness state, a permanent witness state. Once the energy works through the body, the person has nothing to talk about. They are totally disinterested in the external world. They see the external world as a projection of their own pranic force. So nothing interests them anymore. They become rishis, they become yogis. And when they are in this states of samadhi, the states of samadhi for a prolonged period of time, they become states of super knowledge. That is the entire knowledge in the universe descends into their head. And now because their brain is working 100%, they have the capacity to integrate this knowledge into their body. After understanding how things work at the physical and other dimensions, they are no longer interested in life. So they do not give any new definitions to what life is and what life means to them. They have moved away from all definitions. So this person has become an empty container. There is no sense of fineness operating here. Because of which they become a channel for the divine energy to flow through completely. And they are always at this level. And that is why when you sit around saints, you can experience that divine energy, that divine aura, and it even flows into us. We feel very happy, very peaceful sitting around a saint. Because there is no I. St the strong sense of I which an individual has, the saint does not have it. Another difference is, in a top-down awakening, when the energy is descending onto the person's head or it is moving into the person's body, they generally see feathers or birds. The, that is the type of imagery they generally see more. They see snakes too. Any type of spiritual awakening, you will see snakes. But here, predominantly, you will see feathers, birds. You will see icons or images which sort of uh, are pointers towards the heart chakra. For example, you will see Krishna who is an epitome of love. You could see Jesus or you could see certain symbols, your twin flame. You can see flowers. All that which signify love, generally that type of imagery is seen. And you can see feathers with many colors. This is typically what somebody sees when they have a top gun. But when they have a kundalini awakening, they see snakes. Feathers and birds are not part of the imagery. The bird imagery can be a part of the kundalini awakening process in those phases where they are attracting a top-down awakening. As I said earlier, somebody undergoing the kundalini awakening also needs this top-down energy. That pranic energy fuels the process. So when the pranic energy is descending, they can see words and imagery which are part of a top-down awakening. But my case, I did not see that. 
I only saw the bird imagery when my Kundalini Shakti it moved into the head. That is from this area it was moving up into this area. When it was moving up from this area to this area it was transforming. I could see it shape shifting into a dragon. It looked more like a Chinese dragon. And then I saw it as a bird. A big dinosaur bird which is trying to fly vertically straight up into the head. That is where I had bird imagery in my entire Kundalini journey. Otherwise, I have not seen birds or feathers which are associated with the top burn awakening. The next difference. In a top burn awakening, when the energy has worked through the person's body, it turns upwards and it flows through the body out into the system as an auric field. So they have this field that is working through their body whenever the pranic energy is descending onto them. In a Kundalini awakening, you have two forces flowing through you. One is through the spine, that is the Kundalini. Apart from that, the pranic energy which we have attracted from the universe, that is also descending onto our body and it is the same effect like a top-down awakening. So you are experiencing both. You have the Kundalini awakening run through your spine and you are having this top-down awakening energy that is the auric field is also moving through your body. So there are two energetic movements through your body. One is inside the spine and one which is outside the spine. The uh, energy that has descended has turned upwards as an auric field and is moving up out of your body. So here also this auric field is continuously running through somebody who has had a kundalini awakening and this does not allow that person to take on new ideas or new beliefs so whenever somebody who has a kundalini awakening when they want to take on certain ideas new beliefs or want, when they want to retain certain memories they immediately feel a knot in their stomach and this auric field is like it is waiting for this person's call permission to clear away that uh, unnecessary fixed energy that is there at the stomach level. So immediately this energy pushes through the stomach, it clears the knot, it clears away everything and it passes out of the person's body. Because of this, somebody who has a Kundini awakening cannot take on new ideas, new belief system, they cannot hold, to, hold on to grudges. Because this energy is constantly cleansing away their energetic system. In a top-down awakening, this energy does not work continuously. It generally works in those phases where you are attracting energy from the universe. When the pranic energy from the universe is not descending onto you, then the auric field is not as strong. It is still functioning but at a reduced level. But somebody with a Kundalini awakening, this auric field is always working very strong. That is because the Kundalini, which is working through the spine, that is what is keeping this auric field active always. So they never take on new ideas or new beliefs. He cannot hold on to memories, grudges. He is incapable of doing it because... The permanent flow of this energy in the body is clearing away that person's system. Another difference between a top-down awakening and a Kundalini awakening is, in a top-down awakening, a person experiences more uh, uncontrolled emotions, fear, anger, other variety of emotions. They are not grounded. A person is only grounded when the Muladhara Chakra opens. There is a kind of calmness in that person which comes with the opening of the Muladhara Chakra. In a top-down awakening, this energy is mostly affecting the pineal gland, the heart and the gut area. It is not working much on the Muladhara Chakra. Though some fears of that are getting released as a person is working through his karmic baggage, it is not like how it is in a Kundalini awakening. In Kundalini awakening, the Kundalini wakes up. And during the phase when it is working through the Muladhara, the person may be a little ungrounded. But once 
Kundalini moves past Muladhara Chakra, the person is very grounded in this body. There is a kind of calmness, the ability to withstand difficult emotions while being grounded. This is a blessing that somebody with a Kundalini awakening has over somebody who has a top down awakening. Next, the Amrita that drips inside our head. For somebody who is undergoing a top down awakening, they will feel the Amrita dripping through the nasal cavity here. They try to take that tongue up as Kechari Mudra. They can feel part of the energy coming into their mouth where some taste it as salty, some taste it as a little sweet. So here the cerebrospinal fluid which is an ionized because of the activity that is happening at the pineal gland level, that when it drips a little, it can feel a little electrical or a little minty in the mouth. But the Amrita that drips in a Kundalini awakening, it looks like a drop of golden liquid light. It is one big drop of golden liquid light and it feels like it's coming up from the crown into the head and there's a Bindu here, Bindu Chakra at this part, part of the uh, head that is connected to the pineal gland. And when this is dripping inside as a big liquid light drop, there's an amazing fragrance that is associated with this drop. Very divine smell. And when that drop falls down, it is caught up by the Vishuddhi Chakra here. Because in somebody who has a Kundalini awakening, the Vishuddhi Chakra is open. That Vishuddhi Chakra, it takes in this drop that is dripping from the head. The Amrita Nadi, that is the Nadi that connects the Amrita flow from here to your heart, it's activated in the Kundini awakening process. This is a way that we enter into the causal body when somebody has a Kundini awakening. So very higher brain and heart connection happening here, very strong connection happening here. And Amrita Nadi is that Nadi through which when Kundalini reaches the Sahasrara, it takes Shiva and it enters the body through that Nadi. And Shiva and Shakti come into the heart area and they become your Ishtadaiva, that is your, they become the form of your favorite deity and they reside in the heart region. So that happens with the Amrita Nadi. This happens nearly at the fag end of the process. So the kind of Amrita that you experience that is dripping in a Kundalini awakening process is different from that which you uh, experience in a top down awakening. I've had both so I know the difference. Somebody with a top down awakening, their higher faculties are working. So they are able to understand difficult scriptures. They can re read books on certain, certain topics mystical nature or certain philosophies or even the uh, spiritual awakening processes which happen in a human body, they can understand these processes very deeply because of the energy working inside their head. Even somebody with a Kundalini awakening process can understand these processes well when they have an awakening in which Kundalini comes and sits in the Vishuddhi Chakra or in this area. But once in a Kundalini awakening person, when the energy is moving up, especially this area, that person has a lot of revelations. Lot of mystical knowledge gets downloaded into that person's head. Things which he was not aware of earlier, he comes to uh, know about those things. A lot of secret knowledge has come to this person as part of his psychic powers. They too can understand scriptures and they can become good gurus. 
but their understanding is way deeper their knowledge level is way deeper than somebody who has had a top down awakening and when they go into deep samadhi states the entire knowledge in the universe which is the super knowledge it becomes part of their being in a top down awakening process a person is trying to work through his karma he understands many concepts but he still needs time to come out of the cycles of life and death few more lifetimes but somebody who has had a kundalini awakening and the process is completing in his body that will be his last lifetime on earth there's nothing more for him to clear all this baggage is cleared out by kundalini the process becomes faster because kundalini has awakened kundalini does all the cleaning job for this person so kundalini awakening brings about a total transformation of the person to the very last bit so this person becomes an enlightened being he attains the highest states of consciousness after the completion of the kundalini awakening process this person becomes a living shiva on earth the next difference between a kundalini awakening process and a top down awakening is generally a top down awakening is not all that painful and a guru may not be needed in a top down awakening because it is mostly working through the body of the person and not through the spine of the person it can be painful for few people especially they have migraines headaches and all that but then that pain is there for a certain amount of time and then the person moves forward in the process the pain goes away but in a kundalini awakening process it is very painful very very painful and uh, this pain can last in the person's body from one to two life times depending on how fast this process is working to the person's body in a kundalini awakening process the person needs a guru because the chances of this energy moving into the wrong nadi is high chances of the uh, energy getting stuck at certain levels is high there are certain dangers that are there in this path and a uh, self realized guru is always required during this process until this person can tap their inner guru we have a guru within us in our guru chakra in a kundalini awakening process we are able to access this guru once your kundalini moves into the higher chakras it sits here you are able to access the guru in your guru chakra so you have the guru which who is shiva sitting inside your guru chakra and that guru will give you guidance so until at least that stage it is always advisable to have a guru otherwise the process can be very difficult and it can be very taxing in a top down awakening the inner guru is not activated the inner intuition the inner guide who will sort of help the person or there are a team of guides who will help the person during the awakening process that is there for somebody who is undergoing a top down awakening they generally have a team working with them these are from the other astral realms but the guru in the guru chakra is not activated for somebody who is undergoing a top down awakening another difference between a top down awakening and a kundalini awakening is the top down awakening it changes the person it changes the person's priorities in life the person is able to take bold decisions they are more self aware they understand how they affect others around them they understand that they have a mission they have to work towards it but with a kundalini awakening the personality is totally dissolved and everything that is there at a lower state is moved into a higher state or everything has got transmuted to a higher state here the person's way of looking life is totally different for that person the external world is just a projection of their inner pranic energy 
So everything that happens outside, it is happening because it is part of their internal makeup. So they move into a phase where they have a witness state of consciousness working through them. Because they are at this state, they are self-realized beings. They are able to channel the divine energies through them totally. In both the top-down awakening and uh, down-up Kundalini awakening, the vibration level of the person is increasing. But in a Kundalini awakening, it is moving up drastically. It is moving up so drastically that Kundalini has to change its residence from the Muladhara Chakra to the Vishuddha Chakra and then it has to come here and then it moves up into the Sahasar Chakra. That is how fast the vibration level is changing in somebody who has a Kundalini awakening process. So the body, its limits are tested to the fullest in a Kundalini awakening process and withstanding that kind of an activity within the body is a very difficult thing even for the most prepared person. The top down awakening, once it works through the person, it leaves the person at a higher vibration level where they see how they fit into the bigger scheme of things in life. They are generally expressing a lot of love, gratitude. They are trying to be a better version of themselves each day. They are trying to unplug from the matrix. They are trying to work on themselves, improve themselves and the more this energy moves through them, the more they contribute towards their own well-being and the well-being of others around them. And they generally prefer to live from the higher chakras. But when somebody has a Kundalini awakening, this person, the I-ness has totally gone. It's gone to such an extent that the person lives now as an embodiment of Shiva. In today's video, I tried to explain the difference between a top-down awakening and a Kundalini awakening. A Kundalini awakening is more of a fast-track method where the potential, that is your own potential, which is lying at the base of the spine, it wakes up and because it wakes up, you are able to reach up your uh, spine and then you are able to tap into your inner divine potential. In a top-down awakening, this process happens over a period of time. It can be over many lifetimes where the more the pranic energy descends onto the person, the more the personality structures in the person's body are dissolved. Namaste.